I want to open the phones up on this Friday edition, again, for first-time callers on any issue you want to raise. The French situation, the police state, what's happening with oil prices, the economy, any angle you want to talk about, just get right to the point and have a good phone because we don't screen your calls. Just your name, where you're calling from, how you're listening, what affiliate. If you want to give us that info, I, I don't care. We get calls from China, Australia, Germany. I'd love to get some calls from France. I guess just dial your country access code in 800-259-9231. 1-800-259-9231. We have an internal international line. In fact, why don't we just go ahead and fire that up? 512-646-1776. Uh, 512 646 1776. We haven't turned that line on yet, so wait a few minutes. I just decided to do that in midstream. 512 646 1776. Or you can call the international line at GCN 651 695 7755. Or just the classic 800 259 9231. We will be taking your phone calls. I'm going to try to calm down. It's just very frustrating that, number one, if terror threats were real, we shouldn't give up our fundamental freedoms because of that threat, because that then encourages terrorists to attack you to take control of your civilization and make you give in to their demands. Now, if you have criminal elements in control of the civilization— at the heights of corporate governance as well as governmental systems, if they can take control and run your life and get trillions in no-bid contracts over the last 15 years, would government at least allow terrorists to attack if as a society, every time there's an attack, we lose more freedom, even though losing more freedom doesn't protect us from another attack? The way the media dramatizes 13 people that are dead. Sure, it's a tragedy. We're sad. We hope the hostages weren't killed. Some of them reportedly got out alive because they had children with them. I've got one of those images on my screen of a father with his son and a, 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 you know, a woman being ushered out by the police. Uh, they say the two terrorists are supposedly dead and uh, that four of the hostages were killed. But in the big picture, as you know, I say, honeybees kill 200 and something people a year, wasps 300 and something, deer running out in front of your cars is over 500, deer with their antlers kill more than 10 people a year. Oh, yeah, look it up. But see, deer aren't scary, honeybees aren't scary. Great white sharks kill about five people a year worldwide, and most people are scared to swim in over their neck in the ocean. Most people I know because they think sharks will eat them you've got a better chance of a leprechaun changing your oil. Well, maybe you got a better chance of a shark biting and the leprechaun changing your oil because leprechauns don't exist. Now I'm a conspiracy theorist. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe they do. Maybe I'm racist against Irish people because I'm saying leprechauns don't exist. You know, that's the answer to any intellectual argument you can't win. Just say someone's a racist, but I'm going far afield now, aren't I? It is so frustrating to see my freedom, your freedom, our freedom being flushed down a toilet while the borders are wide open. I mean, how transparent is this? France is wide open to, to open immigration. Illegals pour in every day, get put on welfare. The country is on the verge of economic collapse by every metric, just like Spain, Portugal, Greece, Ireland, and other areas. The bankers are taking control of it. The French government saying you can't say father and mother on documents because it hurts people that aren't male or female. Oh, see, being a father hurts someone that can't be a father. See where this tyranny goes? This is mind control. Oh, but these jihadis, which more and more I think evidence is leaning towards this being a real attack— they get to go on Facebook. Let's put up their uh, Facebook for TV viewers if we can. Uh, headline, Daily Mail, Facebook of terror suspects found, and they're on there with their rifles and with their spent cartridges, giving their hand signs, meaning they're going to kill for Allah, and nothing was done. But I've seen articles in the French press 
where vacationing Americans will joke about, you know, we're going to blow this place up partying, and within two hours, French police knock down their Ritz-Carlton door, dragging them out because they said we're going to blow this place up partying. They could look and see they were party animals, no criminal record, that, that it was in context of partying, but they went ahead and SWAT teamed them. Same thing happened a few years ago where there was a text message in the United States of some visitors in L.A. saying something similar. They got a visit. Remember uh, the folks searching for pressure cookers weren't even Muslim in Florida, got SWAT teamed? They wanted pressure cookers to cook some food. I have a crock pot and a pressure cooker. I have a big crock pot for putting turkeys and chickens in it. I expect a SWAT team attack any minute. I'm being sarcastic, but might as well. Everybody knows I'm not a jihadi. Everybody knows I'm not planning a terror attack. Actually, Southern Poverty Law Center, ADL, MSNBC, came out and said that I'm, quote, connected to the Boston Bombers. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like they may have visited my website, which gets millions of visitors a day. It's like saying they visited CNN, so CNN's guilty as well. So this is the attempt that we see taking place. Are you upset about this? Our government creates a new Islamic army under the name ISIS. Our military gets upset about it, says we won't file on the side of Al-Qaeda. Ted Cruz and Rand Paul come out and say that a year and a half ago. So they changed the name to ISIS. It's the same group. And now they're connected directly to these guys who reportedly traveled to Yemen for training and then posted the jihad photos from Yemen with them training at training camps with AK-47s. And then they got back into France with rocket-propelled grenades, RPGs, and full-auto Kalishnikovs, and nothing was done about it. Just like with the FBI, cooking the bomb, giving them the detonators, and then Ahmad Salem tries to stop it, and he's pulled off the case, and they send in another bomb maker to help him finish it and let them carry out the attack. Because then you get more funding, and Congress is calling for more anti-terror laws, and the French are, and the British are. Let's play the MI5 head. Here's the Reuters headline, Britain's MI5 chief warns Al-Qaeda in Syria planning mass attacks on the West. Oh, they've got more than 10,000 heat-seeking, shoulder-fired, impad, surface-to-air missiles that aren't much bigger than an RPG. If these guys could smuggle at least three RPGs they were seen with, one they used inside the newspaper, that's from InfoWars, you're getting that. Can they get a Chinese copy of a Stinger in? Can they get a U.S. modern Stinger? Because the stuff they've got is mainly U.S. Oh, I've even had, by name, the CIA pilot, Tosh Plumley on to talk about his NATO source and others. Flying the weapons into them. The military gets so upset they land because they have military that offloads it. They have contractor pilots. And the jihadis shoot their mouths off and say, we're going to kill you next in English. That's how, imagine being a special forces NATO soldier, U.S. soldier, and you land in Jordan or you land in Iraq, or you land in Turkey at these training camps, and at the airport, at the airbase, a truck pulls up, and it's a 25-year-old jihadi from England with a 23-year-old jihadi from France with a 30-year-old jihadi handler from the U.S., and they even smart-mouth them when they're giving them the weapons. I have that directly from people offloading the weapons. You understand? That's why you saw thousands of officers covering their faces, holding up pieces of paper saying, I won't fight for al-Qaeda in Syria because it's so sick. The American people may buy it and may be in a coma and not know how big this is, but the military does. That's why Dempsey went to Obama 
two years ago at midnight on a Friday and said the military is going to rebel if you try to launch a, a, a air bombardment against Syrian targets and if you try to send in ground troops. Assad's done nothing to anybody. The military is finally waking up. And, and Dempsey didn't do that because he's an angel. The military got it, folks. If we can duplicate that, it's game over for this. And we're an inch away from that right now. The bold move. The naked move. I mean, we had a former colonel in the Egyptian military on who just loves America, loves the U.S. military, hates radical Islam, worked for the FBI, saying, unfortunately, it looks like our government's arming ISIS and is behind it. And he was very upset. And he said, this is to scapegoat Islam and create a class of civilizations. He gets it. He gets it. And it's to turn the Middle East over to a bunch of Wahhabist cavemen. Well, I stand against radical Islam. I'm sorry. I'm a radical. I stand against shooting police in the head. I'm a bad person. I stand against Al-Qaeda. I'm not trendy. I understand that. And all you ISIS people threatening us, hey, we're not a French newspaper, okay? We got people that have taken your asses out in this building right now. We're armed to the teeth, and we're not scared. You got that, you sons of bitches? This is Texas. You want to threaten me, you can go straight to hell. You understand that? I'm not scared. You understand that? I am just sick at what filth you are. All right, ladies and gentlemen, 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. We're broadcasting worldwide today, taking your phone calls. Let's go to Lauren in Georgia. You're on the air. Welcome. Hi. Welcome. Go ahead. Uh, hi, Alex. I just uh, want to thank you for putting out the information that you put out. Um, I just started listening to your show maybe last year, so it's, about, it's probably like three months now. Um, I'm black. It's hard to get any other black person to listen to this show. How can I reach people? It's like, it's, it's, it's exactly what you say. As soon as someone doesn't agree, they say, oh, he's racist. Oh, he, you know, that's their argument to everything. Well, that's because you got a dumbed-down population on all sides that just bleep out uh, stereotypical words because they're not informed. It just makes them feel smart. And, you know, we have every race, color, and creed listening to this broadcast, and that's why these type of shows are important so everybody can talk to each other. So if you want to reach out to folks, you can do it right here on the air. Go ahead. Right. I just, you know, I just really don't even, I just wanted to bring up that point. I know some other people may have, you know, problems reaching out to, to other people in their community. Um, they just don't really understand what's going on. And, and like you said, they just always call it racist. So I just wanted to bring up that point. But um, thanks for all that. You no, ma'am, please don't thank me. Like, like Limbaugh says, just say ditto. Thank you so much. You're a sweetheart. Please, I want to thank you. Pete in Michigan, you're on the air. Welcome. Hi there, Alex. Uh, Long-time listener. I was just calling in about this whole terrorist attack in France. Um, I, I don't know if you've really come to a solid conclusion of what they're going to try to get out of this. Um, are they going to try to restrict our freedom of speech out of this? Or? Absolutely. Oh, they're going to try to bring in cybersecurity. Uh, with new fake cyber Pearl Harbors they're getting ready. And then with this, they're going to try to bring in new political correctness. I, I mean, shopping carts all over won't let you sell uh, stuff even mildly critical of Islam. Uh, Google won't let us sell the Obama deception saying it's racist. Uh, that's what's coming out of this is we have to shut up. We have to comply. We have to go along with the system. And the reason I said that I think this may be a real attack Sure, the door was open, the training was allowed, it was protected, so it is a false flag light, uh, but I've seen the real sexiness, the real avant-garde faux, it's faux avant-garde, it's fake, promotion of jihading as some type of liberal socialist cutting-edge army uh, in social media. It's been allowed to operate, and so... They're just creating the clash of civilizations 
so that the West kills Muslims and Muslims kill us instead of us just promoting cooperation, science, technology, and freedom. Just like the globalists, just like the Rothschilds helped get World War I going that killed 6 million Germans, 3 million French, a million Brits, a couple hundred thousand Americans. World War II killed 21 million Germans, 22 million Russians, almost 400,000 Americans, about 400,000 Brits. I'm going from memory, but you can look these numbers up. Those were all basically staged. They were real wars, but the, the banking cartels manipulated it on both sides. Now they want the third conflict but to be between the West and Islam. And out of that clash, just like the West versus communism, we both become more authoritarian in confronting each other because it's being manipulated by the central globalist committees. What do you think is okay. coming out of this, Pete? Well, I think that you're right on spot with that. And I have a kind of a question or a recommendation, an idea that might be groundbreaking for you. Um, kind of goes along with what the last caller was talking about, trying to get people together. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I tried calling in because you had mentioned something about uh, us getting uh, together and pulling together on things. Have you ever thought about, I know you've done the, the dating website thing a while back. I don't know what Well, sure, we did a that, social network, planetinfowars.com. It's primitive, but it works good for people to meet each other and stuff. I mean, that's one subsection of it, yes. What I was wondering is, could you come up with something that would be kind of like Craigslist, where uh, like-minded people could all get together by their area and uh, maybe, you know, just pull together and pull our resources to prepare for what's coming down the tubes? Absolutely. You know, we have the Prison Planet um, area where people can go in there and talk. We have we have PlanetInfoWars.com. Uh, that's a basic social network that millions of people have used. Uh, we also have the message board, the Prison Planet message board that is kind of organic and operates on its own. Uh, mainly just becomes a giant gossip rag, but it's got a lot of good information as well. So, yes, sir. Uh, but we do have planetinfowars.com. Uh, it's got street art, outdoors, guns, health, video, business, dating, economics, entertainment, Offbeat, politics, science, technology, weird news, world news, activism, preparedness, resistance, uh, members activity, find groups, smart groups, start groups, uh, read articles, write articles, planetinfowars.com, and it's up there right now. Okay, we're going to come back on the other side, continue with your phone calls. Then I'm going to get into just a ton of other news, the weather, you name it. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show, and I'm Alex Jones. I told you when we started the broadcast about 50 minutes ago that I was not going to follow the ongoing soap opera very closely today because so much disinformation comes out in the fog of this hysteria. First, they claim that both of the terrorist suspects had been killed. Now they're saying that uh, one of them's on the loose. First, they said the hostages hadn't been killed. Now four have been killed. Uh, it is just all over the map right now. Clearly, these guys had accomplices to get RPGs and fully autos into France. They say they're working with ISIS and Al-Qaeda. They went to Yemen for training. This is all part of the Saudi Arabian crescent of radical Islamification that they use to take over the Middle East. And most Middle Eastern countries hate these jihadis. I want to be clear. Doesn't mean you have to even agree with Islam. I'm just being accurate here. They hate it. Imagine you're living in Iraq. You can go to the movies. You, your daughter can go to college. You get overthrown. Now they're chopping your heads off. Or Syria. I mean, you could go to Syria, folks, and order a beer. Not anymore where the Al-Qaeda people are in charge. I mean, our government is putting the worst people in charge to destabilize those regions, just like they're trying to destabilize us and take our freedom away. Just like they've caught the feds arming street gangs going back to the 60s, just like we caught the Justice Department arming drug cartels. I mean, it's bad people in government, folks, and corporations. I'm going to go to a caller in France, Stephen France. Uh, what is your view on this? Go ahead. Uh, good evening, Alex. Uh, thank you for, for taking the call. Uh, well, it seems like uh, it's... I don't know if you hear me well, but... Uh, I do, sir. Go ahead. Like, you hear? 
Yes, sir. Okay. Well, it seems to me like uh, everybody here is taking it the same as 2001 in America. Uh, it's a big shock for everybody because there's no good for having people up with machine and, and get down the cops and people like this. Was it, It's an outrage. But I don't know now what is going to be happening, but they are already talking about arming the cops and and making huge amount of security. I think it was, if it was a plot, which I'm not going to say it was, uh, but if it was a plot, it would have been perfectly targeted to motivate all French people to accept the same kind of law that are coming to America uh, as lots of having police the same way as military and have them check everybody in the street and have a huge police state. You said it right there succinctly, uh, just like the White House Chief of Staff, Rahm Emanuel, now Chicago mayor, said, we never let a good crisis go to waste. Whether it was staged or not, they're going to use it to basically intensify the totalitarian state, just as France economically, from what I've seen in the numbers, is in deep trouble. We know historically with economic trouble comes totalitarianism. Do you agree with um, an outsider's view that the EU and France is having economic trouble and that the government's trying to amass more power? Of course, the EU is controlling the whole uh, the whole U Europe, and uh, who controls EU is probably America. So there is problem in France and everywhere. Uh, but, you know, I can see also with this uh, with this event, uh, the president Francois Hollande is having a very low rating right now. I wouldn't be surprised if they can catch those guys, which right now I think there's two old state situation in France, one in Porte de Vincennes in Paris, next to Paris with one guy and two other guys somewhere on the, on the west side of Paris. Uh, That's right. Uh, holding those That's right. As well. well, stay uh, there, sir. Don't hang up. I want to come back to you in one minute when we start the next hour, 70 seconds technically, yeah. and let you finish up. And I want to speak about France as well. France lost 3 million people in World War One, folks. And then now... France is saying we've got to give up all of our liberties because of 13 dead or 15 dead or whatever it is. I want to ask him his view on giving up liberty for security. Well, you never end up getting liberty. You get tyranny. We had a caller from Macedonia that had some really interesting points to make about radical Islamists being brought into all those countries and protected by the West, but he hung up. We're finishing up with Steve. Charles de Gaulle after World War II, basically, they started setting up the Bilderberg Group and other organizations. You can say what you want about him, but he was for sovereignty in the French people. And he called all the major French leaders in in a famous speech and said, when he was elected president, we're not going to tolerate any of you being sold out to foreigners. We're going to have national sovereignty, and I'm basically going to come after you if you engage in treason. You can differ with what the government's saying, but you're not going to work with foreign outsiders. The French basically ended up grabbing their nuclear weapons away from NATO at an airport. There was a big standoff. That stuff's in the history books, but most people don't know about it. And then the West, through British intelligence and the Jackal, tried to actually kill de Gaulle. You won't see that in the history books, but that's in some of the deeper documents. What you have is a bunch of financial interest, and the, the French president is a puppet totally trying to indebt them, get them into a socialist system. You can make fun of France being so socialist, folks. We're only a few years away from that. Obama just came out and announced free community college, as if it'll be free. It'll be indoctrination. It'll fully federalize community college. So we look at France and where they've gone, that's where we're going. And just as they use 9-11 to take our freedoms, they're going to use this now to take French freedoms and France has been deeply involved, the French government, in funding these very jihadis. Uh, other points you'd like to make as someone in France, as you said, dreading uh, the militarization of police uh, that will obviously be used on you. Anything yes, else, Steve? You know, I think we have no choice in France to go to a uh, uh, militarized police. Uh, nobody has guns, nobody has arms. We cannot defend ourselves against uh, stand off like this, uh, and it's never going to happen. It's not in the mentality of French people to have weapon at home, um, so it's never going to be happening. So they have to come up to, to this uh, solution of more police, and I think we are going to be the one following America with a, with a stronger police. 
Now, America may follow in regard to socialism down there, uh, down the road, but we are the ones following America. And the, apparently, the uh, U.S. government has already proposed to help France to set up uh, anti-terrorism action in France, etc. Isn't that I'll just perfect? You. The West creates a new giant Al Qaeda ocean, breaks the dam, pours them into our countries, and now they're going to take our freedoms and put us in a prison collectively, a giant gulag, a giant ghetto, to protect us. Isn't that just sweet? And and think about it. This didn't stop the French having their guns taken the last 30 years. Didn't stop the jihadis from getting RPGs. You can't buy those anywhere. Any other comments? No, I don't, I don't, I don't know how French people would get those kind of weapons. It's impossible. Well, I think they had help, clearly, and... I think we're going to find out that the French government knew and bare minimum, quote, dropped the ball and let this happen. What do you think? Uh, could be. I don't know. It's like uh, they, they have to have a rat in the, in the deal because they knew exactly. It was known that they were meeting every Wednesday, but uh, they had to know uh, more detail. Uh, I don't know. It, it's just shocking for everybody, and uh, I, but I think uh, I think because of this action, we're going to come up to the same militarized as America. I hear you. I appreciate so, uh, your call, and of course, the <laughs> final point in all of this, we'll come back and take more calls and cover news. The French have a system just as sophisticated as the NSA, spying on stuff. It's come out in the news thousands of times. Didn't stop the attack. These guys had Facebook accounts that. I would have investigated. But these things are everywhere. Jihadis bragging, always with their rap music for some reason, it always goes together like a horse and carriage, about what major OGs they are and about the jihad they're about to pull are just all over Facebook and Twitter. And they're allowed to operate. Globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency Potency. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com.